Hello, today we're just going to talk really quickly about how we can look at a dinosaur skeleton and get some idea of how it was eating um, and some of its food behaviors. Um, so to start out, uh, when we're looking at dinosaur fossils, we are um, doing some comparative anatomy to animals alive today to look at their skulls and their tooth structures to understand how they're eating and get an idea about what they were eating. Um, so. Uh, to begin, one of the first things that we start to look at are our dinosaur teeth. Uh, so I have two dinosaur teeth here. Uh, the first one is our T-Rex tooth. Uh, now T-Rex, when we look at their mouths um, and their skulls, their skulls were set up for eating meat. So they have these, well, really big teeth. Um, so the top part here is part of the root, which would be up inside of the jaw. Uh, now the T-Rex, uh, our theropods, would lose their teeth over time. So they were sort of constantly having teeth, they'd fall out or break and the new teeth would come in behind them. Uh, so their teeth were kind of curved back. They would point back towards the mouth so when they took a bite uh, that would help um, if the animal struggled. You know no matter what happened the teeth were sort of helping to push the food back towards the back of the mouth um, with that pointed shape. They were also spaced out pretty far, which would prevent meat from getting caught in their teeth. Um, and they had little serrations on the edges of the teeth. So these are like the, the serrations that you see on a knife, a butter knife, or even a steak knife. Um, and that would help to use to slice uh, through their food as they close their jaws. Now the jaws themselves, when we looked at the teeth, the hinge joint uh, for the jaws uh, was located in the same um, level as the teeth, the tooth row. So as they would close their mouth, the teeth would come together from the back to the front and created a slicing manner to help tear through that food. Uh, so that's something that we see in a lot of our carnivores today and we see in our theropods uh, from our dinosaur our fossil record. Um, now some of our plant eaters, uh, they had different shaped teeth. Uh, one of the tooth shapes that we see um, is shown here. This is a Camarasaurus tooth. Camarasaurus is one of our sauropods. Um, and this tooth you'll see is actually pointed. So on first glance you might say, hey, it looks kind of like um, our T-Rex tooth being pointed. Um, but this one is actually spoon shaped. I like to joke you could kind of <laughs> eat something off of it, uh, but it has this spoon shape um, and it is pointed. Uh, the teeth were spaced out a little bit more. Um, it doesn't have a surface for grinding. It wouldn't be very good for chewing if you have these pointy teeth, um, but it certainly could be good for stripping vegetation off of uh, the plants. Um, so we don't just look at the teeth to figure out what they were eating, but we start to look at other features uh, within their uh, skull to see how they're set up. So to do that, I have a big example over here. Uh, this is a Saurolophus uh, skull. Um, this is from Mongolia uh, in the late Cretaceous, so about 71 million years ago. Uh, we're not going to talk more specifics about that, but we're just going to check out the teeth right down here. Uh, so this Saurolophus shows an excellent structure for eating vegetation and chewing food. Um, and that comes down to some differences that we see in the teeth. So um, our Saurolophus has a front part, a cropping section, where it would use to nip the food. So this is just like our incisors at the front of our mouth. We'd use that to take a bite out of an apple. And then we use our tongue and we move it back to our molars where we start to chew and chomp down our food. Uh, so Sorlophus has this fantastic dental battery here. You'll see that the teeth all come into contact with each other and they're very closely spaced. So that really is great for chewing your food up and down. They also have a space in between the cropping section and this dental battery and that's called the diastema. Uh, this is a spot where the tongue can hang out and then help to move the food back uh, towards those chewing teeth in the back. Uh, the other thing we notice about the teeth is as I put my hand here on the jaw, I actually have to slide my hand into the tooth row. So the teeth are set in from the inside of the jaw. Uh, this provides space for big cheeks and the cheeks have muscles, can help in the, keeping the food into the mouth uh, and then moving it towards the back. Uh, so this tells us that they had cheeks and were chewing. Uh, the other thing that we can take a look at here is that the jaw joint is located down below the tooth row. So tooth row is here, jaw joint is down here. Uh, this difference in alignment means when it opens it ma its mouth and closes it, all of the teeth in this tooth row come together at the same time. Um, and that's going to make for some very efficient chewing. Uh, so that's one thing that we can look at for uh, how our dinosaurs were eating their food, uh, whether or not they were chewing.
Uh, the next thing that we start to look at, if you're wondering, well, exactly what did they eat? We have to look for other features. So we can take a look at some of our fossil feces. So this is fossilized poop. These are coprolites. Um, and these can be analyzed to see what the dinosaurs were eating, uh, find out if they were eating seeds or, uh, you know, cones. Um, or perhaps they were eating meat, so we might find other bones inside of it. Um, so this is a direct evidence of what a dinosaur was eating. The challenge with coprolites is that we don't necessarily know who made the poop, who made the coprolite. Um, so that's part of a, a challenge. We can look at stomach contents, which are called colites. Um, so those are found associated with our fossils and can provide evidence of the last meal of our dinosaur. Um, and then we can also look for um, evidence of predation on dinosaurs based on tooth marks um, and injuries that we might see um, on our dinosaur skeletons themselves. So that's just a quick introduction to uh, understanding what dinosaurs were eating and how they were eating um, by looking at their teeth and their skulls and possibly some of our additional evidence like our coprolites. I hope you found that fascinating. With that, we're done for the day. I wish you luck and happy learning.